No, I don't know if, if cauliflower is just broccoli with the green sucked out. I don't know, I'm not a scientist. Oh, no, I definitely would not eat either of those things. Definitely do not eat those, no, nope. <laughs> that is pretty funny. They do look like little trees. Yes, they do look like little trees, but yeah, don't eat them. <clears throat> Listen, sir, we're gonna have to finish this another time, but oh, I gotta go, I gotta go. Uh, sorry about that. Hi there, boys and girls. Welcome back to another week of LS Kids at your house. This week we'll be reading chapter three of The Biggest Story and learning about how God always keeps his promises. So let's look at some things that you might need for today's lesson. If you have one at home, you might want a copy of The Biggest Story. If you don't have one, don't worry, we'll be reading the story for you right here today. Some things you'll also need are your eyes, your ears, some paper, something to write or draw with, something to color with, a chair, some hand sanitizer, a Lego X-Wing, a giant stuffed animal, an extra large football, a big soft cube, some bubbles, a balloon, and of course you'll need to bring yourself. All right, boys and girls, before we get into our lesson today, we're gonna go to one of my favorite segments, Fun Facts with Mr. Jake. That's not a knife. This is a Nerf. Wow, thank you, Mr. Jake. That was fun. Now that we have the materials we need, let's get our bodies ready to learn about Jesus. As you all know, there's definitely one thing that we do not want to happen when we are learning about Jesus. If you said pull a muscle, go ahead and put one hand in the air and give yourself a high five. So if you don't want to pull a muscle, what's the one thing that we need to do? Stretch it out! All right, boys and girls, for our first stretch, we're gonna stand up. Everybody stand up. Actually, you know what? I just remembered. For this one, we gotta sit down. Everybody sit down. Ah. Oh, you know what? Now that I'm sitting down, I think we need to stand up. Everybody stand up. No, it's sit down. It's definitely sit down. Sit down, sit down. You know what? Maybe it is stand up. Up, 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 up. Okay, okay, okay. For our first stretch, we go down, touch your toes, and reach for the sky. Touch your toes, reach for the sky. Touch your toes, reach for the sky. Touch your toes, reach for the sky. Toes, sky, toes, sky, toes, sky. And everybody hands on your hips. Okay, good. And now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a quick lap. Everyone take a lap. Here we go. Wait a minute, hang on. Sorry about that, boys and girls. For our next stretch, shake it up. And then take this leg right here, shake it up. Step, okay, good. And now take this hand right here and everyone say hello. And then we're gonna go down, touch this toe, and back up. And then everyone take this hand right here and say hello. Touch this toe, and back up. And this toe, 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 and this toe. Okay, now everybody hands on your head, and baby steps to the middle. And everyone's been around one time. And everyone take a seat. <sighs> okay, if your hands are still in your head, you can go ahead and put one hand in the air and give yourself a high five. Okay, now that we've stretched it out, we have one thing left to do before we begin our lesson. Um. That's right, we need to pray. We need to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to open our hearts and to open our minds to what God's word has to say to us. So as we pray, let's fold our hands and lock them together so that we aren't touching anyone else or distracting anyone else. And then let's close our eyes and bow our heads so we can give God our full attention and respect. Will you please pray with me? Father God, we come to you in prayer and God, we wanna start by acknowledging that you are good and that you are awesome and you are in control of all things. God, we thank you for this time together to learn about you in this way. Holy Spirit, will you please be with us as we hear this story today? Will you give us all ears to listen and to learn? So Jesus, we love you and we need you. We pray all these things in your name, amen. Now, Miss Mahela is going to read chapter three of The Biggest Story. Good morning, boys and girls. I'm going to read the third chapter of The Biggest Story. Not too long after the whole tower business, God called a man named Abraham to leave his home and go to a new country. Actually, his name was Abram at this point, but everyone remembers him as Abraham. When God called Abraham, he made a lot of big promises. He promised to bless Abraham and to bless everyone who blessed Abraham. He promised to curse everyone who cursed Abraham. He promised Abraham a land and a child. 
God promised that Abraham would be the father of a great nation and that all nations would be blessed through him. Pretty much all the blessing that God wanted to give Adam and Eve, he promised to Abraham. And the best part, this time, God was going to do everything himself to make sure Abraham got his blessing. You might think that God wanted to bless Abraham because he was such a swell guy, but Abraham didn't know God at all when God called him. And even after he got the call and all these promises, Abraham could still be a liar and a bit of a scaredy cat. Abraham's life had a lot of ups and downs, but he had two, two things going for him. The only two things, it turns out, that really matter. God's promise to bless him and Abraham's belief in God's promise. That's all Abraham had, which was a good deal because it was all he needed. At times, it looked as if God wasn't going to keep his promises to Abraham. For one thing, it was about a hundred years before Abraham and his wife, Sarah, who used to be called Sarai, had a baby named Isaac, who thankfully was always called Isaac. And then when the baby grew into a boy, God told Abraham to kill him. That must have seemed like a not so funny way to make a great nation out of Abraham. But Abraham listened to God anyway. And at the last second, God gave Abraham a ram to sacrifice instead of his beloved son. It was God's way of saying, I'll take care of the rescuing. You just trust me. Eventually, Isaac grew up, got married, and had some kids of his own, twins to be exact, Esau and Jacob. God picked Jacob to get the blessing even though he was the younger brother and wasn't supposed to get the blessing. But God is God, so he gets to pick. Jacob had 12 sons, and this time it was the fourth son, Judah, who wound up with the best blessing. Jacob told Judah that a lion of a leader would come from his family. Great blessings, but not so great people. Isaac was sort of a weakling, and Jacob was a selfish trickster. And Judah did such dumb stuff. We don't even want to talk about that. And yet, again and again, God kept his promises. All the same, he blessed the whole lot of them despite themselves. Maybe the snake crusher would still come from the gnarled branches of the Abraham, Isaac, Jacob family tree. Thanks for listening, boys and girls. Thanks, Miss Mahela, for reading us our Bible story. The big idea I want us all to remember is that God always keeps his promises. Abraham didn't have lots going for him, but he did have two very important things. Do you remember what those were? God's promise to bless him and Abraham's belief in God's promise. Remember, God's promise was that all nations would be blessed through Abraham. So fast forward many, many years to today. How are we blessed by that promise? Jesus! Abraham had a son who had a son who had a son and so forth all the way to Jesus. We all mess up just like Isaac, Jacob, and Judah, but God knew we would. And so he created a plan that couldn't be messed up. He sent Jesus to live a life without ever messing up, something you and I can never do. We sin all the time. Remember sin is anything that we say or think or do that isn't what God wants us to say or think or do. And that sin separates us from our perfect and holy Father. But when we believe in Jesus, our mess ups are all forgiven. God looks at Jesus' perfect life instead of our sinful life. And that allows us to get to have a relationship with God and to be his friend. I'm so thankful that God always keeps his promises. Now, we're gonna practice our memory verse. This week, our memory verse is Deuteronomy 7, 9. And it says, know therefore that the Lord, and you're gonna make an L and bring it across your body like a sash for Lord. 
So the Lord your God is God. The faithful God. So for faithful, we're going to point to our forehead and make two okay signs and then bounce them together. So the faithful God, good. The um, who keeps covenant, and we'll link them together because he keeps his covenant and steadfast love. So I'm going to go through that one more time with you all with all the motions. Then we'll do some silly voices in there. Deuteronomy 7, 9. Know therefore that the Lord, your God, is God. The faithful God who keeps covenant and steadfast love. Deuteronomy 7, 9. All right, let's add some silly voices into this. Miss Ashley? Yay. Ooh, we're going to shout it. You ready? Deuteronomy 7, 9. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and steadfast love. Deuteronomy 7, 9. Awesome. Ooh, we're going to talk like a baby. Where, where, where? Deuteronomy 7, 9. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God. Well, well, well. The faithful God who keeps covenant and steadfast love. Well, well, well. Deuteronomy 7, 9. All right, let's do one more. Oh, I hope it's a good one. Ooh, robot voice. Oh boy. You ready for this? Not gonna be good. Deuteronomy 7, 9. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and steadfast love. Deuteronomy 7, 9. Deuteronomy 7, 9, know therefore that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and steadfast love. Deuteronomy 7, 9. All right, so I am going to make you all a promise. Are you ready? I promise you I am going to cut a hole in this paper. Would you trust me to fulfill that promise? Let's see, can I do that? I did, woohoo! What if I said, I'm going to cut a hole in this piece of paper that would be big enough for me to walk through? Would you trust me to fulfill that promise? Huh? Okay, so here's the piece of paper. Let's see if it would be big enough for me to cut through it after I cut it like that. Look at that. I could walk through it. Isn't that awesome? Okay, now what if I said I'm going to make a hole in this piece of paper that would be big enough to fit this whole building in? Would you trust me in that promise? Well, no, because that's impossible with a paper this big to go around an entire building. When I made a promise to cut a hole in a piece of paper, you had no problem trusting me to keep that promise. When I made the promise it could be big enough to walk through, you might have questioned me, but then we saw it would work. But if I said that I was gonna make a hole big enough for this whole building to fit in, you wouldn't trust me at all to keep that promise. It makes sense to only promise things that you know you can do. And even then, sometimes we fail to keep our promises. But when God makes a promise, you can count on it. He will never break a promise because he can always do what he says he will do. Wow, thank you, Miss Ashley. What a cool activity. Now let's all get up out of our seats and our chairs and get ready to worship Jesus together. Praise the Lord from the heavens, praise Him in the heights above, praise Him all His angels, praise Him all His heavenly hosts, praise Him sun and moon, praise Him all you shining stars, praise Him you highest heavens and you waters above the
from the heavens, praise him in the heights above, praise him all his angels, praise him all his heavenly hosts, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens, praise him in the heights above, praise him all his angels, praise him all his heavenly hosts, praise the Lord. Yeah, praise the Lord from the heavens, praise him in the heights above, praise him all his angels, praise him all his heavenly hosts, praise him, 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 Thank you for joining us today, boys and girls. It was so fun to sing and worship with you and to learn about Jesus together. So as you go this week, remember our big idea that God always keeps his promises. God always keeps his promises. That's great news. So I'll see you next week.